Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. So today is sort of unofficially the birthday of the church. The whole thing. Jesus, in our story, has been crucified and resurrected, come back, hung out with the disciples for a while, and then went away up to heaven. And now, well, they, they knew they were supposed to gather, so they, they've gotten together. They've gathered. And so I can just imagine the disciples sitting around, a bunch of men and women, in, in a room, or probably out, out of doors, and, and they're, they're going, well, well, now what? Well, maybe we should go and, and, and proclaim the gospel. Okay, well, yeah, go ahead. You, you, you should do that. Okay. And, and so, I can just imagine, like, a lot of confusion. And maybe, maybe some of them are planning. Maybe some of them are working on this and developing, a, I don't know, a program or something like that. And all of a sudden, whoosh! The sound of rushing wind and fire appears. And then, right, all of this planning doesn't matter because the Holy Spirit takes over. And suddenly, boom, there is something called church, which is just a fancy word for gathering, actually, is all it means. So they start to gather, and, but, but now they've got something else. They've got fire got this new fire thing burning in them. So I thought this morning we would think about fire. I want you just to free associate here. When, 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 when someone talks to you about fire, what do you associate with fire? Yeah. Camping. Okay. So this is a positive sort of thing. Sitting around the campfire. Right? What are the emotions associated with camping? Fun? Okay. I don't know what you're cold. <laughs> right, so, so, there's, if, so if you're cold, right, the, the fire is for warmth and food and comfort. Okay, so let's, let's, let's pull that <coughs> metaphor a little further. Right, so we have, right, do we think about the world sometimes as a cold place? I mean, this morning it's a little easier to think about it as a cold place. <laughs> right? But, but even, even emotionally a bit of a, a cold place that's full of strangers and who knows what they want. Right? And so the Holy Spirit comes and brings us comfort. Does that work? Does this feel like a comfortable place for you? Does, right? Paul says that the fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace. Right? This is sort of comfortable things that would make for comfort. And, and food. Right? Clearly one thing that the Holy Spirit did is it fed the people. Right? They weren't sure what to do and suddenly they knew. Right? <coughs> Jesus said, you know, when you receive, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. You will be right, fed and you'll have things to feed others. So there's one, one fire association. Another. What else do you think about Andrew, fire. Um, coming from the physical church for a while, to think of Easter vigil and lighting a new fire, Easter outside of the courtyard, and lighting a big pastel candle and process into the church. Okay. Uh, what, what is the fire associated with? Okay, right? And I mean, this one again is, is, is sort of unusual in some sense because when we want light, we don't light a fire anymore. We turn on the switch and suddenly there's light. But of course, as, as Will is going to remind us, right, the only way these lights go on is because somewhere there's a fire, right? And if the fire went out in the plant right here in town, 
the lights would go out too. So even for us, so again, let's check this back for a bit. So how does the Holy Spirit enlighten? Does that still happen today? It helps us to, to, to realize that God will help us and that, that, we'll, that we'll all understand. And, and Good. Right. So it enlightens us about, about God's love for us and God's care for us. Mm -hmm. Other ways that the Holy Spirit... I mean, in our story, right, suddenly these people knew languages, could speak languages that they didn't know before. And let me assure you that every missionary in the history of the world has asked for that gift. <laughs> and most of the time, no, you just got to learn it one word at a time like everybody else. But, but hopefully, right, for all of us, there is, there is some measure of being enlightened. And, I, and again, I, I, don't, I don't want, do we think about that much about being enlightened, enlightenment? I mean, that's almost more, you know, more Buddhist than it is, is Christian. No, Deb says no, it's not. Okay. Tell, can you say more about uh, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Uh, uh, lamp to my path. A light unto my path? A light unto my path. Okay. okay. Um, um, yeah, constantly turning to God for uh, to shed light on um, what seems dark and misty. Lost in the shadows. Okay. Good. So, comfort and light. Other associations with fire. What is fire? Destruction. Destruction. And some home fires recently. Okay, right. And right in, in Alberta, right now in Canada, huge <laughs> swaths of land. Just, just, yeah, burned up. What about that one? Danger. Pardon me? Danger. Danger, right. Is, is, is God still dangerous? Should be. Okay, how so? Well, I mean, unless we've lost all respect, uh, a being that could create the world, galaxies, um, you've got to consider it's kind of dangerous, mm -hmm. as well as wonderful. Right, right. So the two in balance, right? I noticed in in uh, in Peter's sermon here, right? He talks, he quotes from Joel, right? And he talks about the Lord's great and glorious day. But my memory of that verse is it's the great and terrible day of the Lord in, in, in some of the prophets, right? That there was a significant amount of of respect. Let's think about it a different way, right? Are there things in you? that need to be destroyed yet? Are there parts of your personality that you could really do without? Mm -hmm. Amy? There's a hymn, let the fire my dross consume, me the fire's refining. Okay, right. Consuming the parts of you that are not. So we, st we still have dross. We don't usually use the word dross for that, but we don't spend a lot of time refining these days either, right? It's done in big smelters in other places where they deal with, I don't know if they still call it dross or not, but... When you're camping, you put your marshmallow roasting stick into the fire to purify it. Oh, but before you put the marshmallow on it, right, you sterilize it. Okay, right. So, I don't know, again, if, there were, if we, we want to be sterilized, but cleansed, maybe, purified. Okay. Others, what else do you think of when you think of fire? Okay. Okay, uh-huh. And then certainly, right, again, to take that further, right, as a metaphor, Right, the companionship of the Spirit, right? these missionaries went out and look, there was the Holy Spirit. And the missionaries 
went out and, they, and the Spirit went with them. And, right, and then it was there already when they got there, too. And this was their way of figuring out, you know, are we doing the, the way God wants us to be doing them? Right, well, yeah, because this, this, the Holy Spirit is here. So it's that sort of the companion who walks with you. Good. Fire. What else does fire do? I was just thinking that sometimes, you know, we, we're, we're baptized, we're, we're confirmed, we have the Holy Spirit, and then sometimes it feels like it's absent. Okay. But I'm, but I'm also thinking of the dross, you know. Sometimes we hug the dross, you know, the, our, our bad habits, the things that we say we want to get rid of, but do we work on getting rid of them? And can the Spirit inhabit us with, while we hold on to our bad habits okay. and the things that harm the church? Mm -hmm. Good. Right, so, so there's, there's this idea that we want to, but then we don't really want to, and, and yeah. But also the question of absence, absolutely. I mean, there's a long tradition in, in the, the Desert Fathers and the Desert Mothers of, of long times of feeling the absence of God much more than the presence of God. And, and, and you, you sort of, you know the Spirit is there, but you just, you just can't, you just can't feel it. it, it you almost feel the absence more than you feel the presence. You pray, then you pray that you get it. Right, you just keep praying and praying for the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the fire consumes completely like in a forest fire. Uh huh. And there's a rebirth that sometimes you can't see. Right. Okay. Right. So the forest fire comes through and it's just all black, and then and then you know all of a sudden up pops green stuff. Right. I mean, we notice that when you do a prairie fire burn, it's almost like the next day, you know, some of the little, little plants start poking their way through the through all of this blackness. Right. Usually the first thing in a forest fire is something called fireweed. And it's called fireweed because like you know, the week after a fire, suddenly bang, these plants are coming up and slowly followed by little seedlings. And so there's this, yeah, this newness that comes about because of the fire. What about Bible stories? Do you have any Bible stories <coughs> from about fire? I don't know if this is quite Bible quiz time exactly. We have a burning bush story, right? So, so when you think, right? So this is, right? So I don't know you guys yet and how well you know these stories, right? So I'm just going to assume that you don't at this point, right? So this is a Moses story. Right? Moses back, we're back in the, in the book of, I guess we're in Exodus, the beginning of Exodus somewhere, right? And Moses is, has run away from Egypt and now he's shepherding because he doesn't know what else to do. And suddenly God appears to him in this burning bush that's burning, but it's not burning. Right, so he turns aside. And, and the first thing God says in the burning bush is what? Remember, what, what, what does God say? Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes, because you're standing on holy ground. This was, and there are actually churches still in, in Ghana where this is part of coming to church. You take off your shoes when you come to church. Right? I would be a bit cold here, you know, some mornings. Right? And, and, you know, it's... it's and, and other churches go, no, we shouldn't do that. But right? this idea of the sacred, of approaching the sacred, and it's, and it's potentially dangerous. And, and it has to be treated differently. Other Bible stories about fire. I think it's Elijah where they built the altars, the two competing altars. Right, uh huh. And, and they put water and they left the wood on Good. Elijah's altar mm -hmm. for God to set the sacrifice on fire. Right, right. And then the fire came from heaven and it burned up the sacrifice and it burned up the water and everything mm -hmm. around, right? Elijah likes fire. There's another time in Elijah's, in Elijah's story where, where, some, where the king sent a captain and a bunch of men to, 
bring Elijah in to talk to him. Elijah says to the captain, if I'm really a prophet of the Lord, may the fire from heaven come down and consume you and all your men. And it did. All right, and the king sends another captain and another 50. And Elijah does the same thing to them again, or God does the same thing to them again. And the third time, the captain says, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you please come? I just, oh, please, well, sure, okay. <laughs> Use the magic word. <laughs> yeah. right. So again, the destruction, right? But also, like fire is, is right? fire comes from God. And Last Sunday, you remember all the way back to last Sunday's sermon, there was fire in the story of, Sam, of Samson's mother. Do you remember that? Aaron. Oh, Aaron's way back there. Perry, do you remember last... Who was in the... Some, someone was in the story last, last week. You, you guys were. Do you remember, do you remember fire in the story? Mm -hmm. Where was the fire? There, there's an offering. Uh-huh. Good. Right? So that... Right? Because Manoah, he says... Right? Let me sacrifice a kid for you to the angel. And then when he sacrificed it, what happened? The angel went up to heaven in the, in the fire. <clears throat> so very, you know, for, you know, for people in, in, well, still in many parts of the world, sacrifice, right, is turning something into smoke so that it can go up to God. So there's a very clear connection between fire and, and giving to God. So all of this, right, is part of the background to this story. And so when, when we read this story and it talks about the fire of God coming and resting on them, right, the disciples must have had all of these associations, all right? And maybe some of them saw the fire and they were afraid because they go, oh, wow, you know, God sends fire from heaven and what usually happens? Well, nothing good. Right? Or they thought about the bush that was on fire and was not consumed and they go, well, let's hope that's me too. Right? Or they thought about comfort. I mean, who knows what, what they thought of? Except that the Holy Spirit came and then it gave them words. All right, so first you have experience and then there is reflection. And the reflection gives you words about the experience. All right, so God has done this for me. Oh, okay. This is who God is. And then the next step is, of course, to be witness, to be shared. So, so God has done this. I understand now more about who God is and how God cares for us. And the next step is sharing. So that's, I think, the next challenge. To reflect on what God continues to do in our lives. To reflect on what God has done in the past, what we are hoping God is, is going to do in the future. And then to be witnesses to that. For others who can't see it yet. For others who are still hoping. For others who are still waiting. For others who are still carrying these huge burdens. And to say to them, yeah, I know, right? But God is faithful. Let me tell you my story. Let me tell you somebody else's story. So that you can be encouraged, that you can be comforted, so that you can right, access the power of God to get yourself through all of this. So this week, may we go forward, filled with the Spirit, then reflect on it, and be witnesses to what God continues to do among us.